that win for at least a 24-hour period, the biggest ego on the planet for anybody yes. could have been Max Holloway. Yep. It's time to play everyone's favorite follow the money game. Live from the VEASAN studios. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? This is door number one. New high score! What does high score mean? New high score, is that bad? What's that mean? Should I break it? Or door number two. You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! Here's Mitch Moss and Polly Howard. Well, Paulie's on vacation. Jonathan Von Tobel sitting in this week. This is going to be a fun one to expand on the NFL draft. Both of these are up at DraftKings. Kind of telling, by the way, with the prices, in my opinion. We, oh. So door number one, and you have to bet one of these. Door number one, Bo Nix under 32 and a half with the draft position is plus 130. Michael Penix under 32 and a half is plus 110. Which door do you want to go through? All right, so if I have to pick one, I think I'd go with door two. Like so, we we had Todd McShay say that everybody that he's talked to thinks Bo Nix, yeah, second third round backup. He called Penix polarizing, which means obviously that means there's there's opinions on both ends of the spectrum. And I also, I think Penix is better than Bo Nix. I'm kind of surprised that the, I'm the pretty group, convinced that he's right. Better. Like, and I've been kind of surprised throughout this whole process. The group think is that Bo Nix is solidly ahead of Penix. I would disagree with that. So I don't think either is going to happen. But if I'm betting one of them, I'd rather go with Penix. So you're telling me that. The numbers here, the odds, are suggesting that Bo, he's favored to go over 32 and a half. Yep. Michael Penix is favored to go over 32 and a half as well. And yet, four and a half quarterbacks over is favored to go in the first round. Yep. Does that correlate to you? No, Spencer Rattler, you're forgetting about him. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silly me. First round pick. I'm telling you, man, the, the quarter, the first round quarterbacks happens every year. And you see it in the coverage, too. When you see mock drafts, what's the headline? Four quarterbacks, top six. Six quarterbacks, top 12. Oh, yeah. That's all yeah. it's about. You just got to get that. Because you know what? I, I always make fun of it because it's a funny name. It, when I, If I were to put out a mock draft and I were to tell you that Jackson Powers Johnson goes, the center for Oregon, like nobody cares, right? <laughs> of course. But you yeah. got to get these quarterbacks in. So, like, that's a, it's such a great example. And by the way, we were on the air for Visa primetime when that Knicks position at DraftKings opened up. That went from like under minus 120 to over minus 150 within an hour. And they put it at 32 and a half. That was the opening number. Yep. There was uh, another book, a national book, that had, and I don't see it this morning. They may have yanked it. They had Nix's position at 26 and a half. A little off. Yeah. (laughs) It's a little off. They'll probably reassess and post a different number here sometime soon. It's kind of an odd number because there's nobody really around there that's like tied to him, which is kind of odd. So all these mocks that have had Knicks going 12, specifically the Broncos, because of the Drew Brees connection, right? Short white guy playing quarterback under Sean Payton. That's a little too convenient. It is. Well, I actually, and I can I commend um, like Mel Kuyper. So he had a mock draft on, it was uh, March 19th, okay? And he had, he had him, Bo Nix, going 12th. But he even put in there, I don't think that he is a first-round talent, but I'm going to put him in here anyway because the Broncos need a quarterback. His latest mock draft that came out about four days ago, he had somebody else going. I can't remember who it was, but he put in there, I can't do it anymore. He's not a first round talent, okay. essentially. I'm paraphrasing. Okay. And so he didn't have Bo Nix there. Like, that's, it, this is, you're starting to see this turn in terms of where we're at with these guys. And, and oh, by the way, like this chatter of the Broncos being one of those teams that could move up ahead of the Vikings mm-hmm. to take a quarterback because the Vikings need one as well. They appear to be obsessed with J.J. McCarthy. They've made a move now in recent weeks adding a second first round pick where they could eventually move up and take a guy that they would want higher than where they're uh, currently currently selecting. Do the Broncos want to go down that path? They just did it for Russell Wilson. Yep. And clearly they, you know, Sean Payton anyway, re- thought it was a ridiculous move. Yep. Well, and the other thing too is, so you don't have that many assets, you would sacrifice more assets to go get this quarterback, then you would have none to use to build around him as you move forward in future years. And by the way, Sean Payton is reportedly the second highest paid head coach in American sports, right? Not just the NFL. So if that's the case, he's not on any rush in terms of a timeline. So use your assets wisely, build up the roster, go ahead, roll with Jared Stidham for a year, see what happens. And if you finish inside of the top five again, well, guess what? Then use that opportunity to go get a quarterback. They're in no rush to make this happen. Now that's solid logic, honestly. Yeah. And so do they just, at 12, though, to me, is a complete reach for yes. either of these guys, including Bo Nix. Yep. And for Penix, I thought Adam brought up a brilliant point, which I had totally forgotten about. We talk about all the injuries over the course of his year. 
He had he had another injury at the end of the regular season last year. He was not the no, same guy. No, there's no way he, he gets a guy. month off and then comes back in the playoff and looks much better. Like there is a there is something where it, and then again with both of these guys, Mitch, rookie year at the end of the at the end of your rookie contract, you're going to be talking about being in your 30s. That's not pretty much like, or touching your 30s. That's not what you want for a quarterback at the end of his rookie deal. Door number one, the Max Holloway finish Saturday night UFC 300. Or door number two, a walk-off winner in any other sport. Well, as a as a pure alpha male who's knocked out many men in his life, I've seen uh, it happen with my own eyes. Yeah, but I'll go with the door number two because I've been there and done that with door number one. No, door number one. Are you serious, man? Especially with the rush of the crowd and everybody screaming and doing all that just in that moment, and it's, of course leading up to it too, where it's true. Like a lot of people didn't think he was going to be able to do it. Oh, that was awesome. He I'll was go a, with the finish. In my opinion, like that win. For at least a 24-hour period, the biggest ego on the planet for anybody yes. could have been Max Holloway. Yep. He could have strutted into any room in the world with the cockiest right, like look on his face, attitude out of anybody. Yep. Forget Scotty Scheff- Scheffler running away with the Masters. It's Max Holloway finishing. He didn't have to do that, by the way. He was going to win the fight. Right. And he decided, let's go to war, baby. And in the final 10 seconds, they're swinging for the fences. And he just, I mean, it's over with one second to go. Yep. And to do that, like, you know, over a fellow competitor, the closest you'll get touching the line to taking somebody's life, you know, just right there, eliminating their consciousness. We'll never, unless you're a UFC or a boxer, we'll never, I mean, what, what, what's that feeling like? Want to try it out? I mean, I honestly don't want, <laughs> they're not rooting to kill somebody, obviously. No, of course not. But to actually finish the job like that. Right. Oh, man. Trying hard not to make an OJ joke. Uh, door number one. <laughs> The Oklahoma City Thunder lose their first round playoff series or door number two, they win the West. And yes, with, it, yes, it has to be one or the other. Yeah, I know. That's tough. Ooh, that's a good one. I will go with, let me double check to see what this path looks like. Ooh. I'll go with door number one. Because there is a reality. Say it ain't so. That the Lakers lose. Here's the real question. They're not going to do it, but here's the real question. If you're the Lakers, I know where you're going to go. Do you tank this? Yep. But then you got to. Do you beat, risk it? Then maybe you got to beat the Warriors. You got to. You get a home game. You'll get a home game. I know in the you second will. play in. But you would get the opportunity to take on a team that you are three and one against and have absolutely manhandled. In Can the they thread season. that needle? Right. They lose their play-in game to the Pelicans, then come back and, in theory, beat the Warriors. Yeah. To I mean, get OKC. It would be right. It would be the perfect because I don't think that I don't think the Lakers want to see the Nuggets. I, I like this Nuggets team a lot. I think they match up well with the Lakers. Uh, everybody got you know all Randy about Rui Hachimura guarding Nikola Jokic for like five seconds in the Western Conference Finals last year. They got swept. I I, I, I it's not going to happen, but it would be kind of funny if it did. And if it, what if they just lose? They're only they're they're one point underdogs. Yeah, yeah, right. So what if they just lose a coin flip and then win the second game and then you get OKC in the in the first round? Who would you like in that series? Matchup wise, it would be the Lakers. I think so too. They did very well against them in the regular season. Their side, they just they have too much size for them. How, this is uh, on the air. It was after the draft last year. I said the team that you want, you need to bet on this upcoming season right now is Oklahoma City. There was a book and I grabbed it at sixty to one to win the West. Ooh, nice. Back in June, so it's been that yeah. money's been tied up for a long time now. I am deathly afraid of that bet if they get the Lakers in round one. Yep. Any of these other teams you'd rather see if you're I Oklahoma would. City? I would. But you don't want the Lakers to fall to eight and then get in. Door number one, Jackson Holiday plus 450 to win the American League Rookie of the Year. Or door number two, his own teammate, Colton Kowser. He was plus 550 still yesterday until oh, he went yard again yep. down to three to one. I want to say door number one only because with these awards for like preseason hype is is really important. I think, I mean, the narrative was already built in for this kid. Yes. Like, he just has to come up and just have an average an average season, not get hurt, and I think he's probably going to win this thing. I'll tell you, though, this Kowser, he's been, the spring training that he had, yep. it was absurd. He was blistering hot, and it's actually carried over into the regular season, which that does not happen. Four homers and 38 plate appearances. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's forcing their hand yep. because there was going to be basically a platoon because they have so much talent offensively, and they don't want to rush the young guys up. There's no way that this guy can sit. 
Although I, I do think Jackson Holland had grounded out in his first at bat, so he's probably a fraud. Yeah, he probably stinks. In yeah. fact, he finally got his first hit after like ten or eleven at bat. Yeah. So and let's let's chill out here a little bit. It's under the single A rookie ball. Just let him develop a little bit. They will. They have to make another move, I would think, for a pitcher. Oh, you can't. They have too much young talent that needs to play. You got to force the window open. You just you can't. There's yep. no way you can't do this. You would be doing the disservice to the team, to the fans, everything. I totally agree. They are good. Not. I mean, we saw it last year. They were the one seed. Yep. And uh, they didn't have enough pitching. And even some, of, like even some of these rough series losses, like I watched that whole series with the Royals, man. They were just, it was just bad luck in terms of where they were hitting these balls. They're good, man. Yeah. They're really freaking good. Yep.